Hey everybody, this is Jason, Jay's Project Garage. We're gonna do something a little different this week. Uh, I think it was Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, something like that. My daughter calls, calls me, it's like six o'clock at night or something, she's all frantic. And she's two hours away in college. So, um, Dad, my truck won't start. Like, okay, well, what's it doing? I said, well, is, will it crank? Yeah, listen to it. Crank, 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 crank. What do you think's wrong with it? Well, I don't know. You just, I can't tell over the phone. So I was like, uh, see if you can get a ride home. Um, and then I'll figure out how I'm going to get up there and, you know, whatever. So then my wife gets home and we talk about it. And uh, she's like, well, can't you just fix it up there? Now, mind you, she's parked in at the student center at the college, right? So I can't fix her truck in the parking lot. I mean, so I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking about it, and it's like, well, really, the only thing it could be, because I re rebuilt the engine in it a couple of years ago, and she's got, I don't know, 30-some thousand miles on it, and it's been great. It's got a couple of things I'm going to try to fix today, but the only thing I haven't really messed with is the fuel system. So it's like, well, it's probably the fuel pump. My wife's like, well, can't you just fix that up there? No, I got to take the bed off. I can't take the bed off in a parking lot. It's So, uh, back and forth, back and forth. And he's like, let's just get the thing towed home. So we've got um, uh, like a towing thing on our insurance. So I said, just call the insurance and set up a tow and get the thing home. So it's 90 some miles, I think, from here to school. And it wound up costing me like 350 bucks, even with insurance. Like, well, it kind of is what it is. So I'm gonna walk you guys through, trying to figure out what's wrong with this thing. And then we're gonna start, like I have no idea what, we're gonna pretend like I have absolutely no idea what could possibly be wrong with it. And we're just gonna, I'm just gonna go step by step and we're gonna figure out if it's got, you know, a crank signal, if the computer's booting up, if it's, you know, we're just gonna go through it. So, so let's go out to the truck and then I'll, I'll show you a real quick test. Okay, now on these trucks and a lot of, a lot of Fords, you know, it could be a lot, of, a lot of different cars, I'm not really sure, but I know on these, this is the way it works. If you put the key in and you turn it and the check engine light comes on, the computer is booting up. And if you go to crank it and it stays on, that means it's getting a signal from the crank sensor. So I've already done all that. I'm not gonna, I've got part of the truck apart so I don't really wanna crank it. But I know the computer's booting up and I know it's getting crank signal. So we can actually go out to the engine compartment and check and see if it has spark. Okay, you come out to the engine compartment and you get a spark tester. This is the one I use. Um, there's a bunch of different ones. They've got one that goes in line, but basically for on this one, you're going to take it and you're going to ground it with the wire. And on the other end, you're going to take one of the spark plug wires off and you're going to put it on here. You're probably going to need a little bit of help. I like this one because you can actually test spark strength. You can roll this out. Um, but you can watch and see if there's a spark that goes across there. If it is, then, then uh, you know that the coil and the plug wires and everything are good. Another real quick test you can do is you can take the, the boot off the throttle body. Or on this one, it's got a tube that comes from the valve cover. Pull that out, put some flammable brake clean or some starting fluid or something in there and see if it'll pop off. <clears throat> so I didn't do the spark test. This is something that you can do without, you don't even need any tools on this one anyway. Um, if you've got some starting fluid, you, you pull that little tube out, put some starting fluid in there and then you can see if it has spark or not. So far, everything we've done hasn't required any specialty tools at all and it'll tell you uh, whether it's got uh, spark or fuel or whatever. Um, you guys all know the, the, the simple rules of com uh, internal combustion engines. If it's got uh, fuel, air, and spark, it should run. If it doesn't, then you need to figure out why or what it is. So on this one, it's funny because the first, the first night that I messed with it right after I got home, 
I, I pulled the little tube off and I put some starting fluid in there and it did nothing. I'm like, well, okay, well, it's got to be the crank sensor or something. And I left it at that for the night because it was getting ready to rain. So, you know, I'm beating myself up about it all day long trying to figure out what it could be. And it's like, uh, well, I'll, I'll just text, test the crank sensor and stuff when I get home. Well, when I got here, I'm like, I'm going to try that one more time. So I took the tube out and I put some flammable, flammable brake clean in there and it started. I'm like, well, okay, well, it, it has spark. I don't know why it didn't work the night before. Um, so all the ignition stuff's working and I know it's not getting any fuel. And I went through and I checked the fuse for the fuel pump and on this one, you can, my arms are long enough, I can reach the fuse box out in the engine compartment and the ignition switch. So I put my hand on the relay for the fuel pump and turned the key on and it clicked. So I know I'm getting power from the switch to the fuse box, to the relay, and through the relay and back to the pump. So I've already taken the bed loose um, and set it back so I can get to the pump and I'll show you that. Okay, so I got the bed back and I'm looking at the top of the fuel pump. I've already got, I get everything disconnected. These are uh, lines that go to the EVAP system and feed and return lines and stuff from the pump. And then of course you got your electrical connection. But this is, this has the, uh, the regulator the fuel level float and the pump and everything all built into one unit, but I'll show you once I get it out of there. Before this ring just spins on and spins off. So it's just threaded. There's a bunch of different ones. When we get into the Mustang, there's there's actually a metal lock ring that holds it in there. So there's a bunch of different styles, but they, they all basically do the same thing. They just hold the the sending unit or the pump or whatever into the tank. So I'm gonna go and get this off of there and then we'll take a look at the pump. Real quick, um, I took the, uh, the feed and the return lines off and one thing to watch out for is when I took them loose, it just got a little dribble of fuel. I tried cranking this thing right before I started this video. There should have been, you know, 60 some pounds of fuel pressure in here and there was nothing. So that's a pretty dead giveaway that there, there is in fact a problem with the pump. Okay, so we got the pump out of the truck. This one's spring-loaded, so you'll notice it wanting to come up as you're taking the, uh, the lock ring off. But here's the regulator. Float level. This is the pump. And this is like a kind of a pre-filter. It keeps big chunks out of the pump before it sends it through. And then it goes through another filter before it gets to the engine itself. And this pump's actually been replaced before. I don't know if you can see that, but it says Airtex. That's an uh, aftermarket brand for fuel pumps. Wasn't that many years ago, these things were hit or miss. I mean, you could take them out of the box and they wouldn't even work. So I, I'm not overly surprised that this thing failed. The one I'm putting in there is a Delphi, so hopefully it'll be better. Okay, I got the new pump put in. I'll show you that here in just a minute. But while the, uh, the fuel lines are drained, I'm gonna take this opportunity to change the fuel filter. And you guys may not notice, but I noticed it as soon as I looked underneath here. And I just know this truck. It, whoever owned this thing before, everything they did on it was just hokey. I mean, it's like, I'll talk more about the engine stuff here in just a few minutes, but these fuel systems carry 60 some pounds of fuel pressure. And when they changed the fuel filter last time, they broke the connectors and just put pieces of rubber hose in. I can't believe this thing is held together for as long as it has, but uh, I've got a repair kit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace these. This is what I'm gonna be using to fix it. Here's the new fuel filter. These lines, uh, these are repair lines. There's two different sizes. There's 5 16 and there's 3 8 And it's actually a 5 16 connector with the 3 8 line. This is kind of a weird thing on this truck anyway, but you can buy these from Dorman. Uh, they are brand specific. So you just gotta make sure that you get the right connectors. And for putting the lines back together, these are pretty similar to the ones that you use on your house for plumbing. Here's like a push lock. You're basically just gonna push the line in and it'll snap. But I'll show you after I get everything installed. Also, whenever you're cutting tubing, you wanna make sure that you're using a tubing cutter. This won't, this won't crush the tube. So when you put it in here, it'll actually seal. Man, I gotta, I gotta tell you guys, it just keeps getting better. So I got the new pump put in, turned the key and immediately heard the pump cycle. It's like, okay, well, everything's working. 
Went to start it, nothing. Cycled the key a few more times, cranked it, nothing. Went up front, pulled the Schrader valve, or pulled the cap off the Schrader valve, put a pick in there, and I wasn't getting any fuel up to the front. So I came back to the back, I pulled the lines off the pump and cycled the key, and I was getting nothing. And this thing's got a half a tank of gas in it, so I know that's not the problem. Brand new pump, brand new Delphi pump, straight out of the box, doesn't work. So now I get to make a trip back to the zone and exchange a pump and try this all over again. Wish me luck, guys. <laughs> uh, what a day, man. Uh, I started on this thing at like 10.30 and it's 5.30 now. So the closest part store is about 20, 25 minutes from here. I live out in the kind of in the boonies. So went to a different auto zone. They didn't have the pump. Um, the closest one was all the way on the other side of Indianapolis. Um, so in, instead of running all over the place trying to find one from them, I'm not a big fan of auto zone anyway. I, it's hit or miss on the quality of their stuff, but uh, I just I just returned it. Let them know that it wasn't any good. Go over to O'Reilly, which is where I should have just gone to begin with because that's my favorite parts store. Had one in stock. It was actually like 20 bucks cheaper when. Got the fuel pump, uh, got back, put it in. Turned the key on, heard the pump cycle. Turned the key and nothing happened. Just cranked. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me, right? One thing about this channel is I always want to be 100% real. I've been around this stuff for a long time, and I'm usually pretty good at troubleshooting and figure stuff out, but even I, I can make mistakes, everybody can make mistakes or just miss something. So I was like, well, maybe one of the lines is clogged. So I disconnected it from the front, I disconnected from the back, I hooked up one of my airlines on low pressure, and I was getting air all the way to the front. It's like, okay, well, it's not the line. So I hooked everything back up. I, I've got a power probe. I don't know if you guys know what those are, but they're awesome. Um, you can ba you basically hook it to your battery and you can apply ground or uh, power to any circuit. Hooked it up, went to the back, hooked it into the power line for the pump, energized it, pump came on, built pressure, uh, let off of it, went, went and turned the key and the thing fired right up. I'm like, well, okay, now I've, got a, now I've got a power problem. So I go back to the front, to the fuse box. I double-checked the fuse for the fuel pump. Um, pulled the relay for the pump and swapped it with another one just, just to make sure. Got back in the truck, turned the key, and still nothing. Well, the way the circuit for that works, and wiring diagrams are awesome. You, you guys... It, just, it shows where components are, it shows wire colors, and it shows the route the power takes. And one thing I didn't think about, Fords have a inertia switch. So in case that you get in an accident or whatever, it'll shut the fuel, fuel system down so it's not spraying raw fuel all over, all over the place. That's the one thing I didn't check. It's like, well, what are the chances? So I reach in, it's like, well, the, the switch didn't trip. It's still okay. So I'm checking everything and I was like, I wonder if I put a jumper between the terminals on the inertia switch just to check it, see if it's bad. And I pulled the mat, the floor mat back and the wiring connector was loose. I snapped it in, went around to the driver's side, grabbed a hold of the key and thing fired right up. So I have literally been chasing my tail around all day long, trying to figure out what was wrong with this thing. So, I go straight to my daughter, She's like, who was with you the night you called me and said your truck wouldn't start? Is he tall? Uh, yeah. I said, does he have long legs? Yeah, he's about your height. She's like, let me guess, he got in the truck, put his feet down, pushed himself back into the seat, and when he did, he disconnected the wire from the inertia switch. Uh... Yeah, I guess, I guess. Have kids, they said. 
It'll be great, they said. They were liars. I chased my tail around all day long for something that was super simple, but I don't know that it, I never even thought about it, never even considered it. I will next time. So it's Easter weekend. Um, I've still got to fix my truck. I still got to mow. I still got a whole bunch of other stuff I got to do. I've got six acres, but I only mow about two of it. Um, I've got a giant zero turn. The thing's awesome. Maybe I'll show you guys it tomorrow when I'm kind of giving it a little quickie spring service just so I can mow. I've got to go through and put new blades on and all kinds of stuff, but I don't think anybody cares about me working on my lawnmower. Um, but my truck, uh, one of the vacuum actuator hubs for the four-wheel drive in the left front is broken. Uh, it broke over the winter. Last time I tried to put it in four-wheel drive, I heard it snap and it made a pretty god-awful noise. I went ahead and got a new one, um, but like I've said in other videos, I, I work 33 miles away, so progressively over the course of the last couple months, I've noticed that left front getting louder and louder and louder, and I think the hub bearing's bad, so I went ahead and picked one up. So uh, I may start on it this evening, I don't know, but I gotta put a new vacuum actuator and a, and a hub bearing in my truck. And then uh, hopefully I'll have time to work on the 69 because I did get it a box and we'll open it up and see what kind of crap I got. But in the meantime, get out in the shop, work on your projects, uh, have a great day and I'll, I'll see you maybe tomorrow.